What's going on, y'all? It's the Stale Ham Sam's with iTrans, bringing you part two of the Building Your Chart video. Today, we'll be discussing options and looking at open interest and volume to select the right contract after we have our chart built out. We know how much time is going to be needed to see the full move on the play work out and then going into looking at entries and exits and how to trim out accordingly. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you see, I brought that spy chart up back from that first video. As you see, respect to this trend line significantly, we have already towards our top side target around that 430 position there. You can see that on that VI, we are extremely extended between the two points, our negative line, that orange, the purple being the positive. So we know that this move still has a lot of room to go before we see it reversing. Now it is a little overbought on that daily chart. You can see it post to that 70, so we will need a cool off on the stock itself before we enter those option contracts. So I'm going to go ahead and take away these two indicators. That way you get a clear look just at the chart. Now our next goal for SPY, that ETF, the S&P 500, we are looking at 435. We see we have plenty of room on that VI. Know that we need enough. We need a few more days, and we'll need another significant push because this was a key support level back on 429 and 5. So as you see, we'll need a little more time. So that's me predicting if we stay within that trend line, we should hit it potentially not next week, but the week following. So that being said, two weeks out on a spy contract, you want to be sticking towards those monthly expirations. Like I said, we'll be looking at that 435. And with regard to having with with keeping in mind that we will need to see a pullback in the ETF before we enter this option position. Without further ado, we're going to pull up that option change. As you can see, I have it here below. And this is Weeble, and we're going to go ahead and look right into it. So this is SPY. This is the option chain here. We're going to drag this out so you guys can see all the stripes. Pardon me. And we'll be looking into that September, like I said, knowing that we are going to need at least two weeks. So that would put us in August. With SPY, I usually stay on those Friday expirations just because that's where you'll see more liquidity. And I don't really trade. I'm looking at this trade more of a swing trade rather than a daily position. So we're going to go scroll down here. and We're going to see where that volume and open interest is. So this is the call side. As you see, when you're in the money, it will have that tealish box out of the money. You will be in that gray. So we're looking at that 435. We're trying to see where this open interest and the volume is. You can see a lot of people loading up on the 430, which that was our original target in the first video. You see open interest, 62,000 volume with 11,000 volume. That is significant. Next up at that 435 range, you can see is another point where they are loading up. But as you can see with our overextended push, it is at 59%. So we would want to see another pullback before that. And if we're looking the other way, on that downside, they're loaded at 425 and at 422 as well. But with the VI staying positive and our target being at 435, if I were looking at a contract, I'd be looking at the 435s for September 16th based off the volume and open interest, knowing that I do have time and I want to work into this position. That being said, if this 537 is a little expensive for you or you want to take a little riskier position, you could go into those August 26 contracts and we'll look and see what those are priced at and where the volume is there you see we still have that same open interest in volume when respects to being a key contract that people are loading up on 435s you see a lot of people loaded up today because the volume is what happened during the day open interest the amount of contracts open that are waiting to be filled so you can see that there was a lot of volume today on those 435s up 121 percent that's significant so if you're looking for a little more aggressive play, you could go into those August 26th, 435s. Me personally, I would get out into those September 6th, 435s. But this is just one play showing you what you're looking for. You're looking for the volume open interest. You're also checking on those monthly expirations because that'll see tell you where the large institutions are flowing with their contracts. And we'll just go ahead and take a look at that because we do have an expiration next week. So, like you see, 31,000 loaded up on those 435 on those next Friday expiration. That's the monthly expiration, August 19th. And you can also see them at the 430s. So, we can see that there is a lot of volume and open interest on the two key levels that we identified. 
And so that's what we'll be looking at come Monday, potentially for a quick scout, looking at those 435s for a swing scout play weekly. With that being said, let's get into Disney as our next example. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. Disney had an amazing earnings, as a lot of you may have seen. And this is just another chart where we saw a major extension. We are going to need to pull back because if we do pull up that RSI, you can see we are extremely overbought. So this is a play that I could see potential upside to that 130. But knowing that that RSI is extremely overbought, I would like to see a cool down in this stock, a little pullback before entering this position. And even on the weekly, you're getting close to that middle where you could see a pullback. So that being said, we're going to pull up that VI just to make sure that we have a lot of room. And this is something interesting. You see that it is curling towards that top side, meaning that there could be a move or a redirection in the near term. So I wouldn't want to go extremely long here on Disney. I may look to play something in the next week or so. Looking towards that top side, with it being extremely overbought, could see this back down to that 118, specifically probably 120 level in the next week or two. If you're going top side, I wouldn't go two weeks out over 125 just because of how large of a push this was. And we're going to go ahead and turn these indicators off. We're going to roll down to the contracts and take a look. So like I said, you see this Disney, this is that option chain. And let's get right into it. So we're going to look at that monthly expiration first because this is something that's going to be key when looking at Disney for this near time. And this is another way to get those over under levels is looking at those contracts, making sure they line up with your plays and having a contract that you're going to go to with those levels is a key. So we said those 120s, you can see 8,000 volume loaded up on that. Not a lot of open interest, meaning that a lot of that action was today. And that's mostly because of that high push up. A lot of people waiting to see it consolidate or take a turn. So you see loaded up 8,000 volume on the day at $1.12. That's pretty significant. We're looking at top side. Like I guess that would be that 125 contract. Now you could play this as a little straddle position, having one at the 120, not a true straddle, but just having that put side open up that 120 play just because of how overbought it was, and then have those 125s and swing it through the week and trim accordingly. That was me specifically. I'd want a little more time on this and looking towards maybe a short-term pullback before we did go long. And you can see they're loaded up at those 120s, not as heavy. And they're loaded towards that top side at that 124, actually. So if I'm looking at Disney in retrospect, near term, I'll be looking at most likely the 120s for the put side on the weekly or the 125s for that longer side. Now, if we're going to go longer out on Disney, if you weren't after you saw a little consolidation, I'd most likely give this more time just because of how significant of a push it went, I would most likely go out towards October, give you a little bit of time, give you one Fed meeting in between, and I go a little higher up on that strike price towards those 130, sitting about $3, not as significant push on the stock price as far as the contract price, excuse me. But this is an area I'd be looking at at that 130, just because what we charted out, as you see, that's the top side of our zone, but it is going to take a little time. This is that weekly time frame. Drop down towards that daily. You can see that there's not a lot of consolidation you see a small stop right here around that 125.75 level, but there's not a lot of volume that's coming in between. So this could gap between the significantly. So I wouldn't stay as close on that 125. I'd be looking at those 130s for October. I hope this brought you a little bit of clarity when looking at option contracts in general. After you made that plan with building your chart, main two factors are looking at open interest and volume. This has been the Stale Hand Sandwich with iTrends. If you like our videos, hit the like, subscribe button. If you want to come for more of our individual classes or a little more individual coaching aspect, family appeal, go ahead and check those descriptions in the below to our Discord. This has been the Stale Hand Sandwich with iTrends, and peace.